Hello and welcome to ITV News Meridian. Tonight's headlines in the Thames Valley. At this moment in time, I'm arresting you on suspicion of murder, OK? The moment a 19-year-old is arrested for murdering Alex Innes outside a bar in Oxford in a row over a pair of trainers. Also on the programme, on the first anniversary of the Queen's death, we meet the artist from Andover, creating two new sculptures in her honour. But where will they go? And he calls himself the blind man with a backpack. How Chris from Tilehurst is raising awareness about the condition that cost him his sight. Good evening. A teenager has been jailed for life for murdering a young man in a row over a pair of trainers. Alex Innes, who was 25, was stabbed in the heart outside a bar in Jericho in Oxford. The judge described it as a cowardly killing. Today, the court heard how 19-year-old Greg Muinami had a fascination with knives. Wesley Smith reports. At this moment in time, I'm arresting you on suspicion of murder. This was the moment Greg Muinami was arrested. He said nothing then about what he'd done. He said nothing since. But he'd stabbed Alex Innes from Kidlington in the heart in a row over a pair of trainers. He owed Alex £100. After stabbing him with the force of a punch in one of Oxford's most popular districts for a night out, he walked calmly away, leaving his victim to die on the street in a CCTV blind spot. It's just a complete waste of a life. It was difficult. There was no account for Mr Moon Army. He gave uh, no account in his police interview. Um, he didn't give evidence at, at court. Uh, in fact, he, he, he refused to leave his cell for, for some of the days of, of the trial. CCTV images from earlier in the evening show Mwinami getting more and more agitated and handling what the prosecution said was the knife he attacked Alex with in his pocket. The court heard today a search of Mwinami's property revealed he had a fascination with knives. The court heard a number of victim impact statements from Alex's family. His father, Andrew, said, I have to be Alex's voice. He said from the moment of hearing of the stabbing, their lives had been a roller coaster, and no parent should ever have to formally identify a child's body. One of Alex's uncles said, the memory of telling his grandparents will live with me forever. Another said, Alex was kind, thoughtful, vibrant, with a cheeky smile and sharp wit. You cannot imagine the pain of losing him. Their strength and dignity um, never, never ceases to amaze me, to, to be honest. Um, they've sat through every single day of the trial. They, they've heard all the evidence in, in detail, which I can only begin to imagine how difficult that is. Munami appeared relaxed as he stood in the dock for sentencing, at one point appearing to put his hands in his pockets. The judge, his honour Judge Pringle, said it was a cowardly killing. He said it's staggering to think that a man lost his life over such a trivial amount. He sentenced Winami to life in custody to serve a minimum of 24 years and 71 days. That sentence takes into account time Winami has already spent in custody up until today. The Innes family say they too feel they've been given a life sentence. Wesley Smith, ITV News, Oxford. A man has died crashing into a building in Camberley. It happened shortly after six o'clock this morning on Pembroke Broadway near the shopping centre. No other car was involved and the man in his 20s died at the scene. Roads were closed while the investigation takes place. A woman has appeared in court accused of murdering her father at his flat in Banbury. Barry Devonport, who was 88, died at the assisted living block on School Lane in October last year. 54-year-old Lisa Davenport from Middleton Cheney appeared at Oxford Magistrates Court and was released on bail. She'll reappear in court in November. Police have released CCTV images of people they're looking for after a fight in Reading Town Centre in May where a man was attacked with a bottle. Two men in their 20s were attacked by three people outside Revolution de Cuba Bar on Friar Street in the early hours of May the 2nd. A bottle was smashed over the head of one of the victims. He was repeatedly kicked, leaving him unconscious on the pavement. Officers want anyone who recognises the people to get in touch. A sheep on a farm in the Chiltern Hills has been shot with a crossbow. A local farmer near Ivinghoe Beacon discovered one of their ewes with the bolt still embedded in her neck. The vets managed to save her, but police say they're examining the bolt forensically. Now, on the first anniversary of the Queen's death, King Charles today thanked the nation for the love and support shown during his first year as monarch. 
In Andover, the artist Amy Goodman is working on two life-size sculptures of the late Queen commissioned during her Platinum Jubilee. And we've been given a special preview. Nikki Woodcock reports from her studio in Andover. Capturing the spirit and radiant smile of the nation's longest reigning monarch. The biggest challenge, says Amy, is the pressure of portraying someone so recognisable and dearly loved. I'm at the early stages of her portrait, there's lots of rough textures, but you can see she's beginning to emerge. But of course, I want to try and capture that real warmth and that sparkle, that twinkle she had in her eye, because she also, you know, apparently had a wonderful sense of humour too. So it's sort of getting the detail, but e equally her character. The two life-sized sculptures were originally commissioned as part of the Platinum Jubilee celebrations, marking 70 years of devoted service. Since then, they've taken on added significance. Her coronation robe and the robe on the older version, I'm looking to the local communities through workshops to pick up ideas pictorially of how I can inscribe um, images on her robes that describe her reign in the most poignant way. Amy is no stranger to creating landmark statues. The most recent unveiled last month in Dartford in Kent. Bronze depictions of rock and roll legends Sir Mick Jagger and Keith Richards of the Rolling Stones. Closer to home, Amy is behind the Gurkha sculpture in Aldershot and the town's airborne soldier unveiled in 2019. As well as the life-sized bronze war horses at Arborfield Garrison and even Romsey's famous war horse unveiled in 2015. It's a time-consuming process, requiring a steady hand and lots of patience. Here you can see I've got a scale model on my cat um, that's got a lot of detail in there, but obviously on the life-size piece I'll go into so much more. Um, to the left I've also got um, her at the age of her coronation, um, which will be her sister statue. And, um, you know, I've got a lot of detail to capture in both. But it's sort of a stepping stone, you know, from drawings to maquettes to then life-size clay and then into the foundry for moulding and casting. So it's a very labour-intensive process. The sculptures will eventually take pride of place in Romsey and Andover, offering the public a place to reflect on the Queen's extraordinary life of duty and dedication. Nikki Woodcock, ITV News, Andover. Well, they look uh, incredible. And meanwhile, a life-sized bronze statue of crime novelist Agatha Christie will be unveiled tomorrow in Wallingford, where she lived. The writer spent more than 40 years in the town, but famously kept a low profile. The sculpture will be seated on a bench overlooking the kind croft, as if she's drawing inspiration for her next novel. Here's a story, a proof copy of the very first Harry Potter book bought for just £1.26 years ago has now sold for nearly £19,000. The uncorrected proof copy of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, one of only 200 that was printed, failed to sell at auction earlier this week, but post-sale interest was strong and now it's been snapped up. It was found just by chance at the Cunelm Primary School in Minster Lovell near Whitney because they'd feared it had been thrown away. The the owner, a businessman from Farringdon, hopes the book will now be displayed in the town's museum. A man from Tilehurst who calls himself the blind man with a backpack is about to embark on a 250-kilometre trek in just seven days. Chris Owen found out during a routine contact lens consultation that he had a rare genetic eye condition called cone dystrophy. He was registered blind just before Christmas 2021. Well, now Chris is about to walk along the rugged Pembrokeshire coastline in Wales to raise awareness about his condition and raise funds for local sight loss charity Berkshire Vision, which Chris says has provided him with vital support. I was 40 when I stopped driving and um, that's a massive, massive change and it has a massive impact on your mental health and things. And so to be able to raise money for charities like Berkshire Vision, who can provide the services, not just emotional and wellbeing services, but they can also provide social, let you, you know, connect you with other people. If I can raise the money, if we can you know, do anything that can help to contribute and support that, then, then it's just going to be, yeah, it's just going to be absolutely amazing. The number of people with sight loss in Berkshire is rising every day. Um, we're supporting more than twice the number of people that we were before the pandemic. So it, every penny really counts. Um, and Chris has been fantastic in, in leading the way with that. 
On to sport now and coverage of the Rugby World Cup in France begins this evening here on ITV1, which is why our programme is shorter than usual tonight. But ahead of the tournament, a former England captain has told us that fans here in the Thames Valley can play a vital part. Yes, Dylan Hartley has been in Paris where he cheekily offered the Louvre Gallery a new piece of art. He says fans watching the matches on ITV can spur the team on. It certainly inspired me to, to do well, knowing that there's millions of people watching and um, it's quite an emotive thing. It's a very emotive thing, knowing how proud you, you can make people and how, how happy you can make people. And equally, if you don't win, how, how miserable you can make people as well. So the Rugby World Cup is, is a huge event, only comes around every so often. I think they should hang that in the Louvre. It would be pride of place. Football's international break means there are no matches for Reading or Oxford United this weekend. But in League Two, Swindon are back at home for the first time since their 6-0 win over Crawley. Fans hoping for similar success tomorrow, of course, against Newport. Well, with a hot weekend ahead, the Riverside Splash Pad in Wallingford and the Abbey Meadows Splash Pad in Abingdon have both reopened after closing because of the heat wave. But how long is it going to last with the details? Here's Pip. Whatever the weather, it always feels like home. Valent Heat Pumps and Boilers sponsor ITV Meridian Weather. Hello there. It's been another hot day out there. Temperatures in some spots once again exceeding 30 Celsius and more of the same through the weekend. Hot by day, still very warm overnight and an increasing risk of seeing some heavy and perhaps thundery downpours coming our way. So this is the hot air currently across the UK indicated by the orange and red colours. But as we head through the weekend and more especially into next week, cooler air starts to filter its way southwards. So I think certainly by Tuesday and Wednesday, something a lot more manageable should be heading our way. But out there at the moment it stays very warm indeed, certainly through this evening and tonight, but it will be dry, clear skies, one or two mist patches. You can see though temperatures probably hovering between 18 to 20 degrees Celsius for most. So tomorrow morning a very warm start to the weekend, any mistiness soon dispersing, then a good deal of dry and fine weather through the morning. In the sunshine temperatures shooting up the scale once again creeping into the low 30s inland and as the temperatures rise that could spark off some showers. If you catch which one you will know about it, heavy and thundery. And as a result, the Metaphors have a yellow warning coming into force. Take care. Valent Heat Pumps and Boilers sponsor ITV Meridian Weather. So the Rugby World Cup coverage begins with France versus New Zealand at 6.45. But next, the ITV Evening News with Charlene White. Now that is it from us. Have a fantastic weekend. Bye for now. Good night.